Revenge Films. My boyfriend and I dated for a year and a half before we decided to get married. So, we sent out wedding invitations to our family and friends. However, I didn't expect one of my friends, A, would cause such a scene at my wedding. Friend A RSVP'd my invitation. When I ran into her on the street before my wedding, she said, Thanks for the invitation. I'm so excited. Thanks. See you at the wedding. Actually, I recently bought myself a special dress. Great. So, are you wearing it at my wedding? Of course. It was expensive, but I knew it was the perfect dress the moment I saw it. Friend A told me the dress cost about $2,000. And she had to use all the bonuses she received to buy that dress. So I guess she wanted to wear it as much as possible. By the way, the hotel where your wedding is going to be. I heard the food there is amazing. And it's all prepared by the best chef. I can't wait. You're going to do a bouquet toss, right? Make sure you throw it to me. Who else did you invite to the wedding? How many of your friends are going? How many guests did you guys invite in total? What are your other guests wearing? Did they tell you? We're expecting about 100 guests. That's not a lot. Why don't you guys invite more people? You should have at least invited like 400 guests. Well, I don't think we have that many friends. I thought she was asking about the size of the wedding to determine that wedding gift she should get me. But I guess I was wrong. <laughs> then she asked where she'd be seated and made requests like putting her in the center of the front row. On my wedding day, friend A stood out from the rest of the guests. There she was wearing a long, plunging, pure white dress. Everyone was stunned when she showed up in that wedding dress. The wedding reception proceeded, and A came to me when it was time to serve food. Isn't my dress pretty? Um, yeah. I didn't expect her to wear a white dress to my wedding, and wasn't sure how I should react. So, I could only give her a vague response. But A didn't seem to notice anything wrong and continued. See? I knew this white dress would be a good choice for weddings! Everyone's staring at me! I'm like the star here! Friend A was very proud of her choice of dress and wouldn't stop bragging about it. I was still too shocked to think of anything to say. Another friend of mine saw us talking, so she came over and said to A, I never thought I'd say this at a wedding, but... You shouldn't be wearing something like that. I think you should change into one of the dresses the staff has prepared. Wearing that to a wedding is kind of inappropriate. Huh? What do I have to change? I spent a lot on this dress. Oh, I see. You want me to change out of this dress because you're afraid that I'm stealing the bride's thunder? No. The bride should be the one who wears white at a wedding. Look around! Do you see anyone wearing white except you? It's not my fault that I look better in white than her. Plus, I already gave her a wedding gift. I have every right to be here and wear what I want. Everyone who heard her was shocked. I can't believe friend A thought I was jealous of her. After she said that, a man came up to us. I was wondering who was making a scene here. Turns out it was you. Boss, why are you here? The man who came over is my husband's uncle. And apparently, he is also friend A's boss at work. He was also very confused and surprised when he saw A in a white dress. He stared at her dress for a long time with a disapproval look. Have you ever looked up wedding etiquette online before attending a wedding? <laughs> yeah, I did the research my own way. Friend A replied with little confidence. Her attitude was completely different from when she talked to my other friend and me just a few minutes ago. Really? Is that how you do your research at work too? No wonder you're constantly making mistakes. Or are you lying about doing the research? No, that's not what I... My husband's uncle seemed to have given friend A a lot of pressure. Then the staff came again to persuade friend A to change her dress. Eventually, friend A put another dress on and became quiet for the rest of the wedding. However, after the wedding... 
why didn't you tell me that my boss was going to be at the wedding? You made me look like an idiot in front of everyone. Now my boss thinks I don't have common sense. I can't believe you did this to me. Friend A questioned me furiously. How would I know my husband's uncle works at the same company as friend A? I was looking forward to meeting some nice guy at your wedding, but nobody wanted to talk to me after seeing my boss getting mad at me. It was all your fault. No one would talk to you when you dressed like that. Don't you see? <laughs> what do you mean? I told you I was going to wear that dress. I didn't know it was a white dress. Let me tell you something, in case you don't know. Never wear white to someone's wedding. You looked hideous at my wedding and had the guts to tell me I didn't look good in my wedding dress. Most importantly, you ruined everyone's mood and ruined my wedding. Maybe your wedding would have been better if you stood up for me. Why would I? I should have never invited you to my wedding. I gave you a wedding gift and that's how you treat me? Friend A did give me a wedding gift. It was an envelope with a wrinkled $100 bill and four $1 bills inside. Giving new bills as a wedding gift should be common sense. And I don't even know how I feel about four mysterious $1 bills. It was clear that friend A had never done any research on wedding etiquette like her boss had suspected. It's never too late to study about it now, right? Otherwise, you'll be embarrassed at another wedding again. If you ever get invited to another wedding, that is. If everyone stops inviting you to their weddings, they will probably not go to yours when you get married. What? I'm invited to other weddings, okay? Also, people will definitely come to my wedding if I invite them. Don't talk to me next time you see me at someone's wedding. And don't ever contact me again. Friend A blocked me after our conversation. I didn't mind that she stopped contacting me, but sometime later, friend A called me again. What did you say to our friend who's getting married? I've already RSVP'd her wedding invitation, but she suddenly asked me to not attend her wedding. I didn't say anything. I mean, do I need to? Who would want someone like you at their wedding after seeing what you did to mine? Huh? Excuse me? Like I said, if I had known you were going to wear a pure white dress, I would never have invited you. It was my wedding, and you made yourself stand out like a sore thumb. I stood out only because I looked nice in that dress. It's not my fault your dress wasn't pretty enough. You're just trying to blame me for your own failure. No, you still don't get it. People stared at you because nobody should wear a white dress to a wedding except for the bride. They looked at you because you looked like an idiot. The staff also urged you to change the dress, remember? So what? I just wanted to look pretty and meet nice guys at the wedding. Then she hung up on me. I think she deserved it. Nobody would want their most important day ruined by someone who lacks common sense. It's only natural that people would choose not to invite her. More of my friends got married after that, and I was so happy to see how stunning everyone looked at their weddings. I attended so many weddings that it hurt my wallet, but I had never seen friend A at any of them. Rumor has it that she has been asking her friends who were getting married to introduce her to the groom's friends. And she also asked them to invite her to their weddings. It would be more efficient for her to use one of those matchmaking services but she was determined to find someone through wedding parties. That's why she tried desperately to attract attention at weddings. I don't know why she thinks that's the best way. She also needs to learn how to prepare a wedding gift properly. A few years, I had a beautiful baby. I sent the baby pictures to close friends, and I heard from my friend that friend A is still single and chasing after guys. My sister and I were born 12 years apart. When she got married, I was still in middle school. As soon as she got married, my dad suddenly passed away. My mom, who had been a housewife, and I, a middle schooler, were left at home. My mom spent most of her time in tears. My sister and her husband were worried, so they spent some time living with us. My mom and I said that it was okay and that they didn't have to, but they were insistent. Honestly, I really didn't want them to live with us. I'm fine with my sister, but having a guy I didn't really know in the house during adolescence was kind of tough. 
and I'm sure they wanted their own space too. On top of that, his attitude that he was living here for us, and that it made him a good guy, kind of pissed me off. It's not like we asked him to. My sister was always out on business trips and was always tired. And I knew that she really was only thinking of us, so I didn't tell her how I really felt. Around the time I graduated from high school, my mother passed away next. It was such a horrible shock. I was really glad that my sister was around. She had always looked out for me, but since then, she was even more attentive of me. She must have felt that she had to step in for her parents, and work wasn't as busy recently, so she had more free time. Strangely enough, my brother-in-law began to invite his parents and relatives to her house quite a lot, for some reason. At the beginning, it was only once a month, and they're now also family to my older sister, so I couldn't tell them not to come, and I let them be, but... They began to visit more and more. Every weekend, one of his relatives would be in the house. My brother-in-law's parents, his sister, his cousins, his aunt. Most of them were complete strangers to me, and those people were coming to mind in my mother's house and acted like it was only obvious I hosted them. I began to think it was really strange, but since my mother had died, having my sister nearby was reassuring, and I couldn't bring myself to say anything. Soon, a lot of their belongings were left at my house and they were treating it like it was their own home. Then, they started telling me to leave. You shouldn't get in the way of their happiness. You've graduated, so you should hurry up and move out. Stop relying on your older sister so much. Don't kid yourself in thinking it's your house. This isn't your house anymore. It's your older sister and brother-in-law's house. I was a university student, but because they had said it so much, I started to think that it might be true. Is it weird that I'm clinging onto the house? They had said it so much, I think I'd been lightly brainwashed. Once, my brother-in-law's mother asked me how much I had been left in the will by my mother. I had left all that inheritance business to my sister and a lawyer, so I didn't know how much I had inherited, or if I had inherited anything at all. I asked my sister the same question, and when she found out what I had been told, she erupted and asked her husband, What are you doing? Why do you want to know what my sister inherited? That has nothing to do with you! He replied, This house is equal to being mine, so your little sister shouldn't be here. My sister got even angrier asking what he meant by equal to mine. A few days later, my sister called a witness to supervise a formal talk with my brother-in-law. Other than my brother-in-law, his relatives and his friends from work had barged in. He argued that he lived there for years, so he should have a right of possession, and that he lived there to take care of my mother, so he deserved compensation. He also said that my sister had taken his name, so ultimately he had the final say and that, at the very least, my sister didn't have the right to keep it to herself. He had even typed it up in a document. Even his mother spoke down to my sister saying, Know your place, as though she were speaking to a petulant child. I'll never forget that. My sister and her lawyer explained that I was already named as the owner of the house and that my brother-in-law and his family were the ones freeloading. They explained that my brother-in-law had no right to the property, but he only smiled. Then let's change the name on the title deed! In reply, my sister said, No, I'm only changing my name. I've had enough. I want a divorce. My brother-in-law didn't take her seriously, and still believed I would move out when I got a job. So, she started procedures to sell the house and the land, and that's when they began to panic. They visited several lawyers for advice but were rejected, and took it out on my brother-in-law. Why didn't you do something sooner? They weren't poor, but apparently they wanted to live in the city. For some reason, his sister had even made business cards with my address on it, and we found out that his parents had begun talks with a home remodeling company, and that they had planned to make my sister pay for it. Of course, she hadn't agreed to any of those things. When they realized that my sister wouldn't listen, my brother-in-law tried sucking up to me to get me to give up the ownership. When I responded with a clear no, he began to threaten me. My parents' lives are hanging on this house. Your sister will become a divorcee in her 30s, and I'll put pressure on her at work. It'll be all your fault if you make the wrong decision. Are you prepared to take on that responsibility? You aren't, so sign this. He told me this in person and over the phone. 
I didn't care for his parents' lives. They were just parasites trying to take over my home. But my sister was working so hard at her job. His threat to make it difficult for her made me think. I didn't feel any debt towards him. On the other hand, I felt indebted to my sister. If I were to cause her to lose her job, I was at loss and decided to talk to her lawyer. After speaking with him, it was all told to my sister, who erupted again when she found out about the threats. She then told her office and the people around her about the situation she was in, and as a result, she was able to get a divorce without any compensation or asset distribution. My brother-in-law demanded compensation, but because it was made clear during proceedings that he had threatened me, a teenager, it was all rejected. Our house was sold and my sister and I found different apartments. My sister apologized to me until the very end and made sure that I had everything I needed. I had definitely lost my temper with my then brother-in-law, but I would never hate my sister or blame her for what happened. If anything, I felt bad that she had to get a divorce for my sake, but she didn't blame me at all and said, I'm glad I could get away from that horrible family. My ex-brother-in-law and his family's plan had been to take over my house and then sell their own and use that money to live luxuriously. So because they had already sold off their family business, they had no jobs. They must have realized they'd have a hard time finding work because I heard they got into a court case for making a fuss that they wanted their old business back. Also, the situation was made known to our relatives too, and it turned out that one of them was my ex-brother-in-law's colleague. Our relative got pissed and complained to the rest of their colleagues, and my ex-brother-in-law became the target of the entire company's hate. It's only natural. Any normal person would realize that what they had done was ridiculous. My ex-brother-in-law could no longer get on with his colleagues and made mistakes repeatedly, so he was demoted. After that, a postcard arrived from a place I'd never heard of. It was from my ex-brother-in-law to my sister. Whenever I think of that house, I wonder who must be living there now. We should be the ones living there. You, me, and my parents. We were living so happily. I don't know where we went wrong. It makes me so sad to think about it. It's not your house. My sister got a lawyer to send it back to him. A year later, my sister got a new boyfriend. Her ex had spoken as though getting divorced would be the end of the world for her, but she's enjoying her new romance to the fullest. It makes me happy to see her so strong. Our parents are gone, but I'm really glad that my sister, who is so positive and so caring, is my sister. I'm planning a trip for the two of us to show her how grateful I am for her. My husband is a self-proclaimed Ikuman, which means a father who is actively involved in raising the children. One day while we were shopping, I asked my husband to hold our son. Apparently my husband's boss saw him holding our son at the shopping mall and praised him for it at work. Everyone at work also started to respect him, which he couldn't be happier about. Since then, he started to call himself an Ikuman, but in reality, he spends his free time playing video games. And he would only take care of our son when it's easy and leave all the troublesome things to me. I don't understand how he would call himself an Ikuman when he does so little. My mother-in-law was the only person I could rely on when my husband failed to help. She always said, let me know if you need any help. I'll help as much as I can. She is such a great listener. It would help me with almost everything. One day, I saw advice from her. I don't know if I should tell you this, but... What's wrong? Is my stupid son having an affair or something? Oh, no, it's nothing like that. It's just that he calls himself an Ikuman. Ikuman? What is that? It basically means a very supportive father who takes good care of their children. That's such a strange word. It's normal for a father to be supportive and help raise a child, isn't it? He should always take care of the baby since you're already busy with housework. My mother-in-law spoke everything in my mind. I wonder why my husband didn't learn any of that from my mother-in-law. How often does my son look after the baby? Almost never. He bathed him once, I think. 
but he's never changed the baby's diapers. Wow, and he calls himself an Ikoman? I'm sorry that my son is so useless. I should have taught him better. Oh, no, it's not your fault. Don't be sorry. No, I didn't educate him well enough. I'll have to re-educate him. What are you going to do? I'll make him experience what it is like to be a real Ikuman. Later that day, my husband and I went to the shopping center with our son and my mother-in-law. As per my mother-in-law's plan, we left the baby behind with my husband while shopping. Hey, can we switch? He's heavy. What? Aren't you an Ikuman? I thought you enjoyed taking care of your son. But I'm tired. And my arms hurt. Why are you so whiny? Use the baby carrier then. Why do I have to? Because you called yourself an Ikuman. Besides, all fathers have to hold their children. Yeah, but my arms. But what? You said you were an Ikuman. Your father never complained and did a great job taking care of you when you were little. Don't you remember? Fine, fine. I get it, okay? My husband couldn't argue with my mother-in-law and continued to hold our son in his arms. I thought to myself, way to go, mother-in-law. Later, something unexpected happened when we were having lunch at a family restaurant. Hey, eat your vegetables. No. Come on, you need to eat some. I began to feel sorry for my husband. Hey, it's the father of the year. An older man came to our table. Oh, boss? My husband's boss recognized my husband's voice and came over to say hi. I'm a single father, so I understand how hard it is to raise a child. Oh, I see. Huh? What's that smell? I need to take him to the washroom. If it were any other day, he would leave the messy job to me. But his boss was right here. So, my husband had no choice but to take our son to the washroom. After a while... Oh my god! We rushed to the washroom and saw my husband had my son's poop all over his hands. How am I supposed to change his diapers when the thing's everywhere? The boss looked confused and said, Don't you change his diapers all the time? My mother-in-law quickly replied, No, he doesn't do anything for the baby. He only plays with him once in a blue moon. Oh? Is that so? Yes, it's my first time seeing my husband trying to change diapers. What? Seriously? Then what did you do during the two-month paternity leave last year? My mother-in-law and I were stunned, and my husband's face suddenly turned pale. What paternity leave? Well, about that. I knew my husband's company provided paternal leave for male employees too, but I had no idea that my husband actually took the leave. He always scoffed and said, Parental leave is for lazy people who want to slack off at work. I couldn't believe that he had to take paternal leave without telling me. If he had taken the paid leave, I would have seen him home during that time. But I don't remember him staying for two months. While my mother-in-law was changing my son's diapers, I asked my husband's boss more questions. So, my husband never showed up for work while on paternal leave? Yes, our company policy states that employees cannot come into work on parental leave. That's strange. There are days he left the house wearing a suit, and there are times he said he had a business trip and stayed overnight somewhere. What were you doing during the leave if you didn't stay home? Speak up! My mother-in-law shouted at my husband. I went to the casino and went on some short trips. But your spending allowance wasn't enough to go to casinos and trips. Where did you get the money from? Oh my god, did you borrow the money from someone? No, I received money as a baby shower gift from work, so I used that. My husband used the congratulatory money given by the company and his colleagues. He confessed that he used all the money for himself. I couldn't forgive him. He never told me anything about the congratulatory money. The money was meant for a son, but my husband spent it all without telling us. And the worst part was that he used it for gambling. I was furious and speechless, but his boss seemed angrier than me. His face turned red and he said, 
The company gave the money as a gift for your son! It was not for you! I can't believe you left your wife and son at home and went on a spree! What were you thinking? My husband's boss forgot we were in the restaurant and wouldn't stop yelling at my husband. My mother-in-law was also infuriated. She added, I'm so ashamed of you! You spent your son's money on yourself and lied to everyone about what Ikuman you are. You're not fit to be a father or a husband. You must divorce him, Sarah. That's what you should do. Whoa, whoa, hold on! You won't do that, right, Sarah? I don't know, but I'm thinking about it. I'm sorry! I'm so sorry! Please forgive me! My husband apologized over and over, but I still couldn't forgive him for spending our child's money without ever saying a word to me. I wanted to keep a distance from him and think about my future, but fortunately, the company transferred my husband to a rural location the next day. They were short-staffed, and my husband's boss was pondering who to send to the countryside. He ended up sending my husband there, my husband had to stay there for three years. I decided to take charge of our family's money so I could start saving for our own son. I also didn't allow my husband to come home to see our son or me during this transfer. And if he ever decides to borrow money from anyone, even a penny, I will divorce him and make sure he never sees us again. My mother-in-law and other relatives also cut ties with my husband. He's in despair, but I don't want to divorce him yet. I need to make sure he pays for his mistakes and saves money for our son. My mother-in-law still comes over and helps us around the house and help us with childcare. She was so embarrassed about her son's actions and felt sorry for me. She gave me the same amount of money my husband received as a congratulatory gift. She thought about asking my husband to pay her back, but she didn't because it would come from our living expenses. Anyways, I can divorce my husband any time now, so I will take my time to think about our future. It's very reassuring that my mother-in-law has always been on my side. My husband never thought his self-proclaimed Ikuman image would get busted. So, as the money he had spent behind my back, he regretted it after he got exposed and is living with guilt every day, but he got what he deserved. I hope the countryside where the air is clean can help purify his heart and mind. I'm a senior university student. I've saved up enough money for a trip I've been planning for some time. It was my first time going abroad, so I applied for a passport. When I told my mom about that, my father called me out for a meeting in the living room. I somehow knew why the air was so heavy when I arrived. I thought my dad will tell me that traveling abroad is dangerous, but the words that came out of his mouth were unexpected. I heard that you're traveling abroad a bit. Huh? Uh, yes. You need a passport, right? Yes, but is there anything wrong? I was vexed by the uncomfortable silence. You'll be getting a family register when you do that, but... Right. Mom was sitting beside my dad with her eyes cast down. I thought of telling you this after you graduate from university, but... You and your sister are not your mother's children. What? My mind went blank, but I can see why. I have a younger sister and a younger brother, but I look like my dad and my younger brother looks like my mom. But my younger sister didn't look like my mom or dad. When we were younger, my sister and I looked alike. Our younger brother also looked like us until he was three. Dad meekly told me that my sister and I are children of his ex-wife. I won't stop you if you want to see her, but I'll tell you what happened. So I'll let you decide after telling you the story. Understood. My dad married my birth mother and I was born. Then my sister was born. At first, we were a happy family. But when I was three, she started to lose her mind. She confined my father saying that he cheated and called his workplace when at work. On weekdays, she leaves my sister and me in my father's care and went out to have affairs. Even with that alone, I can't forgive her, but she became violent towards dad after. No matter how much she did that, my father never became violent towards her. Then her violence escalated and threw things at him until his eye was hit. He thought that it was dangerous to live in such a circumstance, so he brought us with him and escaped. He was a mess for several years, but they finally got divorced with the help of a friend. However, my mother stalked and harassed him 
She yelled at him to bring me back to her. There was even a time when she kidnapped me. For some reason, she was only interested in me and not my sister. That's why we moved to different places and dad asked for help from the police. However, she's our birth mother, so she wasn't arrested even when she kidnapped me. At that time, my dad and stepmother met. Stepmom took care of us, cooked delicious meals, and loved us like her own. My dad was worried that if our birth mother finds out, she might attack her stepmom. So he declined her confession. But while she was playing with us, we called her, Mom! So she thought that she needs to marry my dad. She told my dad that no matter what happens, she wants to be with my dad and us. So they started dating. Mom is a very strong woman. Then one day, when dad was at work, she took my sister and me to the park. Then my birth mother found us with a cutter in hand. Our birth mother ran towards our stepmom. When she realized that it was our birth mother, she was already near us. Thinking that it was dangerous, our stepmother drew us towards her and protected us. Our birth mother screamed. Let go of my son. Give him to me. Die! Die! She said and stabbed my stepmom's back. The neighbors heard the commotion and came to the rescue, but noticing that, our birth mother kicked our stepmom and took my sister hostage. She brought the cutter close to my sister's face and I saw the color drain from my stepmom's face. Stepmom lost her sense of self and headed straight to my birth mom. She took the cutter and drove it away from my sister. The neighbors held my birth mom back and then called the cops and ambulance. As a result, I had no scratches and my sister wasn't hit. Stepmom's back was stabbed many times so there was blood all over her clothes. And that's why there are still scars on her back to this day. Hearing the story, I cried. I remember that when I was young and in the bath with my stepmom, I told her without thinking, Mom, your back is dirty! To which she kindly replied, Really? Will you clean it for me then? Even though I was still young and didn't understand what I was saying, I feel really bad now. It was like a medal for protecting us. It's not dirty or something to be ashamed of. I apologize for what I said. Mom, I'm sorry. I said a horrible thing. I'm so sorry. What are you saying? Didn't that happen when you were young? Don't cry like a child. You're crying too. Because you're crying. Seeing us, my dad teared up as well. With the incident at the park, my birth mother was arrested. But seeing my stepmom with wounds all over her body, my dad asked to break up with her. It's not that he didn't love her anymore. He felt sorry for what happened to her because of him. I'm sorry you had to go through this because of me. I'm so disappointed and ashamed of myself. I will never break up with you. I love you and the kids, so I will never leave you. Being told that, dad couldn't break up with her. Since they care about each other, they decided to get married and my younger brother was born. Dad showed me the newspaper with the article about my birth mother attacking my stepmom, as well as an article about me being kidnapped. Of course, her picture and name were there too. I felt like that was the first time I saw my birth mother's face. Sadly, my sister looks like her. If you want to see her, I will respect your decision. But you might be in danger, so I oppose. He said, and my stepmom looked sad. I can tell that she didn't want me to meet with my birth mother. But after hearing the whole story, I never thought of wanting to see her, not even once. That's because my mother is in front of me. Besides, I don't have any memories of my birth mother. My earliest memory is of my stepmother. That's probably the reason why I don't have any memories before turning five, but I understand. No, I have no plans to see her ever. I learned that blood ties aren't everything. You've shown that to us through your actions. Really? I'm glad to hear that. Dad looked relieved to hear me say that. Sorry to tell you this sad truth when we were only talking about you getting a passport. No, I'm glad you told me this now. But honestly, I don't think you should tell my sister yet. She's preparing for exams, so I don't want her to worry about her birth mother. Right. The timing is not right to tell her yet. 
I hope you understand that I was going to tell you sooner or later about the truth. I understand. Finding the right timing is difficult. I learned the truth by chance, but my sister doesn't know yet. She looks exactly like our birth mother, so she'll probably be shocked when she sees her picture. It'll be a hard pill to swallow for my sister, who likes her stepmom a lot. Dad told me that it was up to me to decide whether I would meet with my birth mother or not. But I don't want my precious sister to meet such a wicked woman. I will never forgive her for what she's done, and if possible, I don't want to meet her. But my sister will eventually know the truth someday. It won't be soon, but when the time comes. I will protect my family just like how our stepmother did for us. In my previous work, there was a senior staff member named Karen who harassed other employees. She's been working there for six years, so I can see why she works fast. However, she had a bad habit of bullying other employees when she felt like it. Basically, she only explains things once. When she explained the job description and how to use the computer, she only talked about it once and that's it. Then when I asked, um, I don't understand this part. Huh? Were you even listening? I already explained it to you once. How can you forget it already? Do you think this job is a joke? But I just started this job and I don't know anything yet. How could she be so cold? I have a lot to learn and I can barely keep up every day. You don't have to be a genius to learn anything perfectly every day. The other employees who started the same day as me still hasn't learned anything yet, but the other senior employee slowly explained it to him. I'm quite jealous. I was only allowed once to ask Karen about work, so I asked other seniors, but... Huh? Why are you asking others? You're making me look like I'm not teaching you well. Are you making fun of me? Stop making me look like I'm the one who can't do work. But I'm asking others because you won't teach me. I was so frustrated. I asked the department head if he could do something about it, but... Hmm. We only allow one recruit for every senior employee. If there are more newbies to teach per senior employee, they'll be too busy for other tasks. The senior assigned to me is not teaching me well. That's why I'm in this situation. But I had no choice but to follow her. When I didn't finish work on time... You're not cut out for this job. If you can't finish it on time, start an hour or two early. I don't understand, so I'm a bit slow, but no matter how early I start, if there's no one to teach me, it's the same. She also said things like, If you're serious with your work and the result is this, it's rather annoying. You're useless. It's a waste to pay overtime for a good-for-nothing like you. Go home. The others don't want to be bullied by her, so they pretend that they don't see the situation. The previous employees under Karen's supervision consulted the department head, but Karen talked back to the boss and defended herself. Despite being warned, she doesn't stop bullying, even the boss gave up. But there are at least four people I know who quit working because of her. I heard that two of them got depressed and are still going to the hospital for treatment. They lost the confidence to work and didn't go out for some time. Karen changed their lives for the worse, but it doesn't seem to be enough for her. She targets different people and makes fun of them. What a jerk! I was so tired of her bullying, so I imagine that I'll someday be the boss and record her secretly. Every morning, while on the elevator, I pressed on to record and saved it after work. I continued it every day. Then one day, she announced that she'll be getting married, so she'll be resigning. She met a man with a high salary. When you're a woman like me, men won't leave you alone. Out of all those who courted me, I chose the best one for me. She got cocky and bragged about it. Of course, deep inside, everyone thought, I don't care about her happiness. I want her gone, so I'll send her my blessings. <laughs> I'm so happy that troubled Karen will be gone soon. But I don't want to put these recordings to waste. Since I didn't want her to leave without a fight, I made a plan. Karen wants to show off herself in a wedding dress and receive a wedding gift. So she sent everyone a wedding invitation. Of course, no one wanted to go. That's because she bullied everyone, including those she was not assigned to. As is expected, she told everyone individually, 
I helped you all this time, so you should send me a wedding gift. Understood? When she came to me, I told her, Sure, thank you for inviting me. She walked away in a good mood. Then, on the wedding day, I couldn't go, so I sent the recording, saying that it was a surprise video from a co-worker. Of course, it was a compilation of all the recordings of Karen's bullying. Then, I sent a letter of resignation on the day of the wedding because, if that recording goes public, the company and the neglected power harassment might get in trouble. I don't regret resigning from a company that doesn't listen to my complaints. That day, I turned off my phone, so when I turned it on the next day, I received a ton of messages and missed calls. Karen left a voicemail saying, What are you doing? My wedding was ruined because of you. Take responsibility for it. Hey, where are you? Answer the phone. I'm going to destroy you. I missed several calls from my coworkers, so when I called one of them, I was told that before my surprise, it was a normal wedding. But the moment my voice and Karen's were heard, everyone went silent. What is this? Who did this? Delete it! She went crazy in her wedding dress. The boss was white-knuckled. Everyone was confused and the groom's parents said, What is the meaning of this? You're harassing your co-workers with your power? Y no! It's not what you think. What is it then? It's clearly your voice. Actually, aside from the voice recordings, I compiled what happened to her victims, who resigned because of her. The groom was discouraged. The wedding was interrupted halfway. Because of that, Karen told the groom, This is not what you think it is. You're not who I thought you were. I can't believe you bullied your co-worker to the point that they had to go see a doctor. I can't live with you, so forget this wedding ever happened. The wedding expenses will be billed to you, and I'll be demanding alimony from you. This is a mistake. Wait, wait for... The bride and groom quarreled. As for the company, the people at the top scolded the department head for his poor management. Because of that, he ended up resigning. I'm glad I sent a letter of resignation. Since then, Karen searched for me, but I didn't lie or exaggerate. I just told the truth. After that, I went back to my hometown. But no one knows where it is, so I'm not worried about Karen finding out. I bought a new phone and changed my old one. After that, Karen was sued for ruining their wedding. Seems like she'll have to pay a huge amount for alimony. Karen's friends and relatives heard what happened, and the news eventually traveled to her parents' ears. I can't believe you harassed your co-workers by using your power! You're a disgrace to this family! This is what happens when you treat others badly! I never want to see your face ever again! I can't believe she's enjoying bullying others to the point that they resigned. She's the worst. Everyone looked at her coldly. With no one around her, she is now a shut-in. I'll never see her again, but I'm so glad I got my revenge. I hope she somehow realizes what it feels like to be harassed at work. After that, I started working at a small company in my hometown. The senior employee assigned to me this time explains in a very easy to understand way. Thanks to him, I feel fulfilled in my work and life. My husband cheated on me. From the start, he didn't have particularly handsome looks, and his income wasn't anything impressive. But he's kind and honest, and he's always smiling. That infatuated me, and I married him. We're both working parents, and we have two daughters. I worked, did the housework, and brought up the children with his help but he cheated on me. The girl is a young Miss Anna from our company. Miss A never knew her father and is probably into older men who are kind to all creatures great and small, like my husband. He was never good with keeping secrets and I quickly saw that was wrong. I never thought he could actually cheat, but when I asked him out of concern, his attitude was strange through and through. I abode by my shame and asked my friend at the company, who works in surveillance. She introduced me to a reasonable expert, and I had him investigate. Results didn't take long to pour in. My husband and that young girl were very much in love, and no one noticed. They only intended to keep their affair a secret. Just a few photos of them entering and leaving a hotel were enough, but the expert even managed to video them doing it in the car. I was shell-shocked. I was traumatized, and there were also a part of me who didn't want to believe all of this. 
I wondered how I would interact with him onward. But seeing a silhouette in the front window of his car, moving with rhythm, I couldn't help but laugh at how ridiculous it looked. Thanks to that, I never had much stress about it at all. This isn't to say I had none whatsoever. There was some discord later on, but we smoothly got to the point of a divorce. My children are not at an age to be lied to anymore, one being in high school and the other in middle school. They apparently suspected something was wrong with their father when they were observing me. In the end, I showed my husband the proof of his affair and demanded compensation from the both of them. As a result, I got the compensation, of course, and some of his insubstantial savings, custody over my children, and child support. I actually thought they put up more of a fuss or say they didn't want to pay, but they were both in high spirits. And... I really am sorry, but our love is... I'm sorry, but I think I've truly fallen in love with your husband. Can't remember exactly, but you get the gist. But it seemed to me they were excited that they had this sort of forbidden love between them. They were both thinking it was an obstacle, and that if he had simply divorced me and paid the compensation, they would finally be together. Maybe they were hoping for something like a messy divorce that I refused to accept, but still their love wouldn't break and would become even more pure. Or some nonsense like that. To be honest, my inner feelings were indeed all jumbled up and whatnot, but I look at him now and see an ass that I decided to didn't need anymore. Relations between each other and our family were anything but strained, and I'm not sure what my daughters were thinking of the fact they'd be separated from their father because of his affair, but it seems they don't intend to forgive him for betraying and abandoning his family. What was worse, while they were alone in the house, my daughters just happened to be looking for something, discovered some more proof in the dresser. That confirmed what they thought, and since then they looked at their father with contempt. And so, the divorce was final, and my husband became my ex. Our children were grown already, so there wasn't any substantial difference in our lives, and they started to help me out much more. Now that I'm a single mother, my lovely daughters put helping me at the top of their priorities. My eldest would already made dinner by the time I came home, and my youngest would have cleaned the house. When our daughters were born, he was overjoyed because he wanted adorable little girls as his children. But I was never this thankful to have two wonderful girls to call my own. My eldest's cooking tasted exactly like mine. And my methodical youngest rendered every nook and cranny spotless. Even though I'd become a single mother, because of my daughters who understood how hard that would be, I was blessed and saved. And with the compensation from the both of them, we're financially secure for the time being. My ex later remarried. But I heard through the grapevine that it was a catastrophe. All things considered, their life together never became what they envisioned, and the girl lost interest, especially. <laughs> Perhaps becoming a regular couple you could just find out walking at the park without much stimulating experiences was what caused her to lose interest. They were very much into each other because I was between them, but after getting married, they never had to keep it a secret anymore. Maybe she had no need of love without obstacles. In the end, the girl ran away back home and later divorced him just like that. One day, my ex was kneeling in front of our front porch for a long time. I asked my children just in case, what should we do? Leave him! That was all they said. My youngest never said anything. Whether someone reported him, I'm not sure, but the police stopped by to see if everything was okay. After I told them, we're already divorced and he has his own place to stay. They took him away, probably to where he lives. Well, I do think he's repenting, but I can't forgive the fact that maybe this third eye opened when his second wife left him, and could get back together with me. In other words, if that one vetoes, this one's better. And that's cringe. If you betrayed me and your own children, at least show some sure sign that you're set on never returning. Pathetic. <laughs> to be honest, I never thought things would last between those two. After I found out about their affair and made my demands... We'll get over anything that stands in our way! We'll never drift apart even if someone tries to break us apart! I'm sorry, I can't adhere to what you want anymore! Your children probably hate us, don't they? What with their father being stolen from them? Such things you find in cheesy drama shows were uttered without hull. So I began to think the heat would only last so long before it cooled down to bitter nothingness. 
That's why I could relate to my ex coming to beg for forgiveness. But what was more vital was that I wasn't going to let him back into a home where its own children look at him contemptuously. Of course, I couldn't forgive myself either. They were all for the divorce after seeing that video, and it must have been a big shock to them. I knew that the bigger the fuss got up, the more it would benefit their cause, so I quickly made legal arrangements for a divorce. What makes this story so funny, though, is that, that this would make their separation much more imminent. Even after the divorce, I've had countless questions from my daughter's schools, my workplace, and my friends of changing my phone number, but I never changed my contact with my phone company. That's why my ex would call me saying, Listen to me, please, I beg you, I'll repay anything you want me to. I want to see the girls, let them hear what I have to say. Or send abundant apologetic line messages, but I remain emotionless since seeing that video. I wonder, what would my ex say if he found out his children saw that video? If I were him, I would go insane with guilt and embarrassment. Perhaps he just gave up all hope after I blocked his ass, but he disappeared from our lives completely. The house where my daughters live with me I inherited from my grandfather before I was born, so I had no intention of moving. But my ex broke his contract with the apartment he and his ex-wife were living in soon after, and went somewhere else. I didn't really want to know where he went, and I didn't really care, but a chatty relative said, First, he cheats on his wife and abandons his children, but his second marriage didn't last at all, and he couldn't go back to work. So he quit his job, and God knows where he lives right now. Good riddance. Of course, even if I didn't have to appeal to my company about my husband cheating on me, if we were working in the same place, everyone would know, and the two of them married as a result. And if that marriage was doomed, everyone would nod, thinking that would be obvious. I wonder my ex, who lost his second home life and his job, would be thinking right around now. I do believe he regrets everything, since he wants to kneel at our front porch. But then again, cheating often leads to broken lives. Am I right? My name is Haro Mubita. This story isn't about me, but something happened recently that made me think it served them right in the end. These days, I started to notice a very extravagant foreign car in the parking lot outside the mansion where I live. What was strange was that it wasn't the kind of mansion that the filthy rich folk would live in, but one for students or for a single office worker. That's why it was spooky and natural that the car was parked outside such a place. The car remained parked non-stop for around two weeks, so I assumed someone knew it moved into the building. It was on a Sunday evening when I was getting the laundry that had been drying on my veranda. I was done with that and just looked down at the parking lot without thinking of anything when a car drove in and parked right in front of the expensive car, like literally a hair's width away from touching it. Thinking about it like the letter T, the expensive car parked first was the perpendicular line and the cheap car was the horizontal line, blocking the exit of the other car. The driver of the cheap car simply went inside the mansion after getting their luggage without moving the car at all. So I thought, could that expensive car belong to an acquaintance or a friend of theirs? There wasn't anything noteworthy afterwards, so I completely settled on the idea that they knew each other. And after making dinner, I ate with the window open. Perhaps 30 minutes had passed when I heard the sound of a spamming car horn. Beep, beep! I brushed it away, convinced that someone had illegally parked in someone else's spot, and relaxed in front of the television. But... Beep, 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 beep. The intensity of the car horn increased. What the hell is that stupid racket? Annoyed by the loud sounds, I stormed outside and looked down upon the parking lot. I then found out the sound came from a woman who was the driver of the expensive car, spamming the horn. The woman appeared to be in her 40s or 50s and had these huge sunglasses that literally covered her whole face. She also wore extravagant clothes. She's honking at the cheap car that was parked in front of her. The expensive car was blocked by the cheap one and thus couldn't get out. It seems the owners of each car did not know each other. But if that's the case, why did the driver of the first car decide to park their car in front of the expensive one? I formed a hypothesis as I studied the situation. My conclusion goes like this. The owner of the cheap car knew the expensive car never budged during a certain time and thought they were parking illegally. Then the woman opened her window and shouted in a loud voice. 
To someone who owns this cheap car, please hurry and come out here. Hurry up and move it. It's inconveniencing me. I'm in a terrible rush. The woman shouted this numerous times and continued to slam the horn, but the driver of the cheap car never showed. 30 more minutes passed and the other tenants of the mansion were like, What's going on? What the hell is taking so long? Like typical onlookers, they started to appear on their verandas. Passerbys also asked the woman inside, what's going on here? Obviously, I couldn't eavesdrop on how the woman answered them, being too far, but I could hear a kind male pedestrian suggesting, shall we contact the police? To the woman, but the woman answered, the police won't be necessary, and sent the kind man on his merry way. Afterwards, the woman started shouting. Does anyone know the owner of this car? I'm at such a loss. I can't get my car out. Hurry up and move it out of the way. I'd seen them leave the car, but I didn't have a clue who the man that got out of the car was. And he looked intimidating, so I kept my mouth shut. After some time, perhaps three hours, the driver of the cheap car walked straight up to the woman. The relief that swept over me with the thought that everything would now be solved lasted but a moment. The man asked the woman in a booming voice, Why are you even been parked on this space? Now wait a minute, says you, who illegally parked in front of her. You should say you're sorry first. I retorted to him, but I'm a coward, so I only retorted in my mind, obviously. I'm in a hurry. I'll be bothered if you don't hurry up and move it out of the way. Of course. I was going to leave quickly, but because you parked here like this, I couldn't get out at all. Hey, oh? No one was there, so I only borrowed it a little bit. Wait, 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 wait. What? Here I realized a small mistake I made. <laughs> Turns out it was the woman who was parking illegal. But you can't blame me for making a mistake. She was wearing clothes that screamed style, while the dude not only had an intimidating face, but donned his whole body with black and wore a necklace around his neck. So no matter how much you tried, you would always end up assuming he's some high school dropout. <laughs> Summarizing the transaction that followed, the man left his flat empty for a month because of his job. And the woman wrongly assumed the tenant had moved away and that his parking space was available and frequently used it to pay a visit to a friend who lives in another mansion nearby. I guess she never thought the true tenant would come back. She claimed she was only using the parking space for a little bit, and in the slim event they returned, she foolishly thought that only a quick blare of the horn would get an apology and the parking space back. You'd think the strong-faced guy would now move his car out of the way, problem solved, but no. He went on to say, I already drank a bit, so I can't drive. You'll just have to wait until tomorrow. If you can't wait until then, hire a tow truck yourself and haul it out of the way. But don't you dare damage my damn car. He started walking away, but the woman retorted to him. Now hang on just a minute. How much do you think hiring a tow truck costs? Furthermore, she shouted, There's no way I can wait until tomorrow. I'm in big trouble if my husband finds out. So in other words, the woman was going to her lover's place this whole time. If you say you've drunk a little and can't drive, I'll drive your car out of the way for you. So, would you give me your keys? It's a drag to my car keys that are back in my flat. I'm tired from a long business trip, so you better wait until tomorrow. Or take care of the situation yourself. I'm out! Wait, wait, wait a minute! How cruel! This is too much! The woman, who apparently closeted her admitting she's to blame, started shouting, half crying, that he was cruel and cold, and the dude never did look back as he walked away. Guy never came back out after that. And even afterwards, the woman would go on spamming her horn, enough to be acknowledged as a neighborhood nuisance. She was yelling at the guy to come back out, and someone called the police. And this whole thing blew up into a frenzy. Embarrassingly. And you, you came out here to help me. I can't go home. Do something. No matter how many times the woman called someone who is allegedly her lover for help, they never showed up. Apparently, the police don't normally interfere with matters of illegal parking on privately owned spaces, but just couldn't leave the racket not attended to, so after giving the woman a fair warning, they left. As though it never happened, the racket quickly died as the woman stood there motionless and white. All the other tenants of the building and I were finally able to relax. 
I didn't pay attention after that, so I wouldn't know what happened. But the expensive car and the cheap car were gone the next morning. So maybe the woman actually did wait until morning for the guy to move his car. Also, I never saw that luxury car in the neighborhood again after that. So I'm assuming she and her lover separated. Maybe the guy who owned the cheap car went a little overboard, but I have experience in someone parking in my space, so my gut tells me he did a good job with the situation. My name is Haro Mubita. This story isn't about me, but something happened recently that made me think it served them right in the end. These days, I started to notice a very extravagant foreign car in the parking lot outside the mansion where I live. What was strange was that it this is the kind of mansion that the filthy rich folk would live in, but one for students or for a single office worker. That's why it was spooky and natural that the car was parked outside such a place. The car remained parked non-stop for around two weeks, so I assume someone new had moved into the building. It was on a Sunday evening when I was getting the laundry that had been drying on my veranda. I was done with that and just looked down at the parking lot without thinking of anything when a car drove in and parked right in front of the expensive car, like literally a hair's width away from touching it. Thinking about it like the letter T, the expensive car parked first was the perpendicular line and the cheap car was the horizontal line, blocking the exit of the other car. The driver of the cheap car simply went inside the mansion after getting their luggage without moving the car at all. So I thought, could that expensive car belong to an acquaintance or a friend of theirs? There wasn't anything noteworthy afterwards, so I completely settled on the idea that they knew each other. And after making dinner, I ate with the window open. Perhaps 30 minutes had passed when I heard the sound of a spamming car horn. Beep, beep! I brushed it away, convinced that someone had illegally parked in someone else's spot, and relaxed in front of the television. But... Beep, 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 beep. The intensity of the car horn increased. What the hell is that stupid racket? Annoyed by the loud sounds, I stormed outside and looked down upon the parking lot. I then found out the sound came from a woman who was the driver of the expensive car, spamming the horn. The woman appeared to be in her 40s or 50s and had these huge sunglasses that literally covered her whole face. She also wore extravagant clothes. She's honking at the cheap car that was parked in front of her. The expensive car was blocked by the cheap one and thus couldn't get out. It seems the owners of each car did not know each other. But if that's the case, why did the driver of the first car decide to park their car in front of the expensive one? I formed a hypothesis as I studied the situation. My conclusion goes like this. The owner of the cheap car knew the expensive car never budged during a certain time and thought they were parking illegally. Then the woman opened her window and shouted in a loud voice. To someone who owns this cheap car, please hurry and come out here. Hurry up and move it. It's inconveniencing me. I'm in a terrible rush. The woman shouted this numerous times and continued to slam the horn, but the driver of the cheap car never showed. 30 more minutes passed, and the other tenants of the mansion were like, What's going on? What the hell is taking so long? Like typical onlookers, they started to appear on their verandas. Passerbys also asked the woman inside, What's going on here? Obviously, I couldn't eavesdrop on how the woman answered them, being too far, but I could hear a kind male pedestrian suggesting, Shall we contact the police? To the woman. But the woman answered, The police won't be necessary and sent the kind man on his merry way. Afterwards, the woman started shouting. Does anyone know the owner of this car? I'm at such a loss. I can't get my car out. Hurry up and move it out of the way. I'd seen them leave the car, but I didn't have a clue who the man that got out of the car was. And he looked intimidating, so I kept my mouth shut. After some time, perhaps three hours, the driver of the cheap car walked straight up to the woman. The relief that swept over me with the thought that everything would now be solved lasted but a moment. The man asked the woman in a booming voice, Why are you even parked on this space? Now wait a minute, says you, who illegally parked in front of her. You should say you're sorry first. I retorted to him, but I'm a coward, so I only retorted in my mind, obviously. 
I'm in a hurry. I'll be bothered if you don't hurry up and move it out of the way. Of course. I was going to leave quickly, but because you parked here like this, I couldn't get out at all. Heyo? No one was there, so I only borrowed it a little bit. Wait, 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 wait. What? Here I realized a small mistake I made. <laughs> Turns out it was the woman who was parking illegal. But you can't blame me for making a mistake. She was wearing clothes that screamed style while the dude not only had an intimidating face, but donned his whole body with black and wore a necklace around his neck. So no matter how much you tried, you would always end up assuming he's some high school dropout. <laughs> Summarizing the transaction that followed, the man left his flat empty for a month because of his job. And the woman wrongly assumed the tenant had moved away and that his parking space was available. And frequently used it to pay a visit to a friend who lives in another mansion nearby. I guess she never thought the true tenant would come back. She claimed she was only using the parking space for a little bit. And in the slim event they returned, she foolishly thought that only a quick blare of the horn would get an apology and the parking space back. You'd think the strong-faced guy would now move his car out of the way, problem solved. But no, he went on to say, I already drank a bit, so I can't drive. You'll just have to wait until tomorrow. If you can't wait until then, hire a tow truck yourself and haul it out of the way. But don't you dare damage my damn car. He started walking away, but the woman retorted to him. Now hang on just a minute. How much do you think hiring a tow truck costs? Furthermore, she shouted, there's no way I can wait until tomorrow. I'm in big trouble if my husband finds out. So in other words, the woman was going to her lover's place this whole time. If you say you've drunk a little and can't drive, I'll drive your car out of the way for you. So would you give me your keys? It's a drag to my car keys that are back in my flat. I'm tired from a long business trip, so you better wait until tomorrow or take care of the situation yourself. I'm out. Wait, wait, wait a minute. How cruel. This is too much. The woman, who apparently closeted her admitting she's to blame, started shouting, half crying, that he was cruel and cold, and the dude never did look back as he walked away. Guy never came back out after that, and even afterwards, the woman would go on spamming her horn, enough to be acknowledged as a neighborhood nuisance. She was yelling at the guy to come back out, and someone called the police. This whole thing blew up into a frenzy. Embarrassingly, and you, you came out here to help me. I can't go home, do something. No matter how many times the woman called someone who is allegedly her lover for help, they never showed up. Apparently the police don't normally interfere with matters of illegal parking on privately owned spaces, but just couldn't leave the racket not attended to. So after giving the woman a fair warning, they left. As though it never happened, the racket quickly died as the woman stood there motionless and white. All the other tenants of the building and I were finally able to relax. I didn't pay attention after that, so I wouldn't know what happened. But the expensive car and the cheap car were gone the next morning. So maybe the woman actually did wait until morning for the guy to move his car. Also, I never saw that luxury car in the neighborhood again after that. So I'm assuming she and her lover separated. Maybe the guy who owned the cheap car went a little overboard but I have experience in someone parking in my space, so my gut tells me he did a good job with the situation. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.